So in the last video, we used cross sections to visualize the graphs of quadric surfaces. And in this video, we're going to see some more techniques to use to help get a sense of what the graphs look like. And this tool is often going to be easier to use than cross sections. So let's say we have this quadric equation x squared plus y squared equals z. So notice that we can rewrite the equation in this way, involving the square root of x squared plus y squared. And so you might be wondering, why would we want to rewrite it like that? Well, think about what the square root of x squared plus y squared actually means in the graph. So say we have some random point in three-dimensional space. And so you can see that by the Pythagorean theorem, the square root of x squared plus y squared is the distance of the point from the z-axis. So we will call this quantity the square root of x squared plus y squared of z, which just means the, the shortest distance from the z-axis of any point. Using this new notation, we can write our equation as of z squared equals z. And so whenever we can write a quadric equation only in terms of z and of z, then we automatically know it has rotational symmetry about the z-axis. We know this because if any points, say there's a group of points on the graph that have the same z-coordinate. Now according to our equation, that means they must have the same distance from the z-axis. So imagine you're looking down on the z-axis. So this light blue dot represents the z-axis. And then the purple dot is any point. And that has some distance from the z-axis or z. And so all of the other points on the same z-coordinate as that purple point are going to have the same distance from the z-axis. So you can see how the graph is going to have rotational symmetry about the z-axis. So if the graph has rotational symmetry about the z-axis, then that means there must be some sort of curve that we can rotate around the z-axis to generate the surface. So we have to decide where to look to find a curve that we can rotate around the z-axis. So a, a good choice looks like the xz plane for a positive x. So whatever curve is in this plane, we can rotate it around the z-axis to generate a quadric surface. So notice at this plane, y is equal to 0. So uh, the equation becomes x squared equals z when y is equal to 0. And so we're interested in the curve in the xz plane for positive values of x only. And so this is half of a parabola. So now all we have to do is rotate this curve around the z-axis. So when we do that, you can see that the quadric surface is kind of like a bowl, where one side of it, one side of the bowl is made up of a parabola. So let's look at one more example. So first verify that you can write it in terms of z and the distance from the z-axis. And then now we need to find the curve to rotate about the axis. So again, we look at the xz plane for positive values of x. So we set y equal to 0, and our curve in this xz plane is z squared minus x squared is equal to 1. And so this is you know, an up and down hyperbola. And so when we, when we rotate this curve around the z axis, we get something like this. It's like we have two small bowls. And so note that this quadric surface is actually made up of two separate parts. And so this technique doesn't just work with the z-axis. So notice how the square root of x squared plus z squared signifies the distance from the y-axis of any point, and the square root of y squared plus z squared is the distance from the x-axis of any point. Just like with the distance from the z-axis, if we can rewrite an equation in terms of y and the distance from the y-axis, it must have rotational symmetry about the y-axis. And then 
if we can rewrite the equation in terms of x and the distance from the x-axis, then it has rotational symmetry about the x-axis. We have this equation x squared minus y squared plus z squared equals 1. And so notice how we can't write it in terms of the distance from the z-axis, so it's not symmetric about the z-axis. But we can write it in terms of y and the distance from the y-axis. So we know this surface has rotational symmetry about the y-axis. And now we need to find the curve to rotate. So first we need to look at which plane should we find our curve in. And so a good choice looks like the xy plane for positive values of x. Whatever curve lies there, we rotate around the y-axis. Now, we could also look at the zy plane for positive values of z. That would work just as well. So in the xy plane, the z value is 0. So setting z equal to 0, our equation becomes x squared minus y squared equals 1. And for positive values of x, this is a side-to-side -side hyperbola. And so rotating that around the y-axis, we get something like this. And of course, in 3D space, it would kind of be on its side because it's along the y-axis, not the z-axis.